Good morning. Good morning. As uh, Mitch said, my name is Peter, Peter Kala. I am the station manager, station director of the West Africa Democracy Radio. As you may know, last month, WA Dara and Source Fabric picked up the Knight Button Award for 2011 for innovations in journalism. This is uh, something we will talk about uh, later on in our presentation, but uh, permit us kindly to tell you a little bit about uh, the West Africa Democracy Radio. WADR was actually set up by the Open Society Initiative for West Africa, OSIWA for short. OSIWA is a foundation of the Open Society Foundations based in the United States and uh, a, a, an organization set up by the uh, billionaire philanthropist George Soros. When uh, Osiwa decided to set up this radio, it thought it should be a trans-territorial radio, and it was in reaction to uh, the prevailing situation in a part of West Africa called the Mano River Basin. The Mano River Basin comprises three countries. Liberia, Sierra Leone, and Guinea. At the time when this idea was conceived, two of the three countries in the basin were engulfed in civil wars, Liberia and Sierra Leone, with the third country, Guinea, taking the backlash of uh, exodus of people from the two neighboring countries. Initially, the basin uh, was an economic black block, and uh, with the wars, everything had crumbled. And they had thought that the radio would be called the West Africa Democracy Radio because the belief there was that uh, democratic practices and principles and tenets did not prevail leading up to the war in these uh, two countries. And that this radio they wanted to set up will then uh, be a not-for-profit radio believing that it will be able to operate without external influences, especially from governments in the sub-region. And of course, this was in response to the absence of free and independent media in these countries while the war went on. It was to be a trans-territorial radio that would ex facilitate the exchange of information within communities in the West African sub-region, a platform for expression, freedom of expression, and um, primarily it will have served, and it is serving, as a hub of a network of community radios, beginning with the three Manor River Union countries and now into the broader West African sub-region as you will find out later on in the, our presentation. And it will also uh, set up to provide an alternative to the approach of uh, foreign media in reporting Africa where bad news is good news. And um, our own belief is that there are a lot of noble things happening in our sub-region. There are model cases, there are success stories that also need to be told. So that was one of the mission of uh, the radio. If you see there we have, it's you speaking. It's also about giving voice to the grassroots people. A lot of these people are either not reached by the media or not even heard. So why the community radios as a target in the West Africa Democracy Radio uh, setup? As you will see, uh, and it's still the case today in West Africa, the state-owned radios are targeting uh, populations that are political, politically active, and they want to be able to influence these people in the cities and the larger towns. The commercial radio stations do exist but they are driven by what, to, what is the, called the profit logic. If they get into a community and they cannot get adverts and they cannot make money, certainly there's no business there for them. Now, if you look at these two scenarios, we are left with uh, the ma majority of the people not being informed of what's happening around them in their own countries, much more being heard. And uh, we believe that they too have their own views on uh, developments uh, in, uh, as they affect them. So there became, there existed a void 
and Debbie Adiara then moved in to fill in this void. This, this, the, the model there was that we will have a hub in Dakar from which we will then broadcast news and information into these communities and then in a two-way flow of information gather content through our partner radios which we will tell you about later into our overall uh, production. When the radio started, it started on a four hours a day uh, broadcast uh, arrangement. That arrangement was so because uh, the first idea was to use the short wave. And if you are acquainted with the soft short wave, there are a couple of problems associated with it. One of the problems is reception. How do you get short wave into a community radio? What gadget do you use for reception? And the second thing is cost. The cost is so inhibitive, even for uh, the four hours. And so therefore, the radio then had to change its uh, uh, medium of program distribution. And so it went satellite in uh, 2009. Today we work with a London-based group called uh, Radio World Radio Network Broadcast. And so this has enabled us to be able to distribute our content to the partner radios. And um, in the interim, before we got into the satellite uh, uh, broadcast, we were on, and we still are on, uh, the FM band in Dakar. And um, we are on the satellite, and now the internet. On the internet, which constitutes one of our major uh, mediums of uh, content distribution. We have our live streaming, we have uh, the SoundCloud, uh, the Facebook and the Twitter. We will tell you about them later. Uh, thanks to Source Fabric for getting us to this level. And our fourth medium, you will see uh, our affiliate stations in the various countries. For our content gathering, in order for the content to be relevant to the communities and the countries of West Africa, one of the things we did was to hire correspondents in the parts of uh, the continent. This network of correspondents has been growing. We have uh, 13 of them, but uh, if you look on the presentation, you will see we have 10 actually. They have grown because we have gone into Cameroon, we have gone into Niger, and into uh, Burkina Faso. So we now have Titan correspondence across West Africa as our content providers. Our partner radios have grown also to 33 in eight countries in West Africa, and about 75% of them are rebroadcasting our programs, and at the same time, feeding us content from uh, the remotest parts of uh, the sub-region. They are normally selected on the basis of geography. We have limited ourselves to five radios per country. North, East, West, South, Central. Most often uh, uh, selecting the capital city. Uh, the demography, the area coverage of the partner radio, their acceptance to relay WADR free of charge. Our relationship uh, with these radios is not monetized. We want them to buy into the whole concept that this is an effort to feed uh, the rural people, to feed the people of West Africa with information on what's happening just around them in the, the very next neighboring country. And so they also have to agree to sign a partnership accord with us. And this partnership accord provides that the radio be an independent radio. You will find that in most of uh, uh, West Africa, there exist two types of community radios. You have the community-based radios, and you have the community-owned radios. The fear there is that if you are working with community-based radio, which are normally uh, privately owned, you run a risk because in top political times like uh, election era, you will find that uh, these radios can really become political tools. And we don't want to be associated with uh, such radios. So we try to get them into uh, uh, 
being as independent as much as possible, maybe looking at their governance structures and so forth. As you will see here, we are in a number of countries, Mali, Senegal, Sierra Leone, Guinea, Liberia, Cote d'Ivoire, Togo, Benin, and still growing. But at the moment, our focus now is to consolidate our gains in the, the number of radio stations that we have had. In our partnership agreement, we've undertaken uh, to give them technical assistance and uh, provide them professional training. We are not a training institution, so how do we give them uh, assistance? We are not a grant-giving uh, uh, institution neither. We ourselves source for funding. So what we do is we look for potential donors who want to work and improve the lot of community radios to fund some of the programs that we have. So when it comes to training, we also work along with training institutions. They are either local universities, local training organizations, and uh, organizations, associations of media uh, 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 practitioners, like you would say a journalist union or so. So we work along with them in doing these training sessions. And um, we have had the time to do some donation to some of our partners. And uh, it's interesting that for $1,000, how much you can do for a radio. You can get them a motorbike, which helps them to be mobile in terms of content gathering, or maybe just a computer. What does the computer do for them? We teach them to digitalize their programming, and so where they have manpower shortage, the, the station can go on even in the absence of the technician when he goes for lunch or whatever, and for them to also use their computers for digital production, using like the, the cool edit or Adobe or any of uh, Audacity, any of these systems. And so they end up with quality production in terms of sound, and if they have the training, and they can be able to produce community-related and community-sensitive uh, 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 programs. Uh, the chart here will show you our daily airtime distribution. 40 plus percent of uh, our airtime goes to our magazines. Our magazines are produced uh, 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 on the basis of uh, contents from our correspondents around West Africa. So if we were talking about uh, HIV and AIDS in a certain program, a correspondent in a given country will then supply us three, four, five minutes of sounds on the subject matter for the, 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 the producer of that program at head office, and then this is compiled and built into a 30 minutes program. So most likely when you listen to our program, you should have a clear idea of what, um, of the issue of uh, maybe, uh, AIDS in the military looks like because it's a combination of uh, information from uh, different parts. We have time for music because, uh, as you know, the traditional role also of the media is to also entertain. And then we have our news air time. Our news air time uh, takes up about 20, what percent? 25 percent, 25.4 percent. And um, they are 30 minute packages and they come in French and English. So where we have major news breaking from a francophone country, it's then translated, voiced over for the uh, uh, anglophone audience and vice versa. We have French and as I said earlier, we have French and English services. Uh, they come on hourly, every hour, other hour is one language. And the content distribution. Uh, there are so many uh, media institutions uh, in the world today, international broadcasters, local broadcasters. But for our purpose, we have 60% of our content dedicated to news and information from West Africa, about West Africa, 30% about the rest of uh, Africa, and 10% from uh, the global world. For our program uh, and content gathering, you will see the chart if you look at it clockwise. At WADR's head office, what we do is that there is this daily production meeting, and that takes the trend of uh, our broadcast and our content gathering. It moves on to our network of correspondents. They are then informed of uh, the outcome of uh, the meeting. And then you'll see we have our affiliate stations 
who are also there to supply us some information as required, depending on what's happening in the area. Uh, they will normally, along with our correspondents, talk to the grassroots people. That's where we come in with It's You Speaking. We allow them to tell us and tell the world what they think and what they feel. And then, as a not-for-profit uh, radio, and depending on the expertise and uh, the, the um, specialization of uh, the NGOs and uh, the CSO and advocacy groups, intergovernmental agencies and so forth, media releases, these are all other sources of our content that we broadcast. We then, um, I told you about magazines program, our magazine programs, they are on health, they are on social issues, gender, youth, agriculture, environment, citizenship, culture, sports, African history, and then talk shows. We do press reviews also. What are our challenges? Our challenges are, are dwindling resources. The radio that was broadcasting four hours a day and catering to three countries now has to deal with uh, eight countries. Instead of three correspondents, we now have to have seven plus. Uh, instead of uh, having a small staff when you're broadcasting four hours, we now have to have a larger staff as we go 24 hours in all of our services. And then um, we need some funding. We want to do an audience survey, a perception study. This we will be doing in a miniature way uh, in Dakar this weekend. Today's Friday. It should start this weekend. And um, we are caught up in how to provide technical and uh, professional training aid to our partner radios and affiliate stations. As I said earlier, we have a challenge of differentiating between the community-based radios and the community-owned radios in uh, building our partnerships. The opportunities that uh, we see are, for instance, we, we, we see there's a high appreciation among our target audience, the rural people, for information on um, um, the sub-region. Uh, we are impressed uh, by uh, the growing visits to WADR website uh, by the diaspora. Uh, as we will show you in some of uh, the stats we gathered from uh, Google Analytics and from uh, other sources. Uh, we are impressed that uh, community radios hold a great deal of potential in um, uh, spurring transformation in their localities. Uh, there's a big difference in what a national broadcaster means to a guy 600 kilometers outside of the capital. The first thing is that um, they don't even know this guy, and so the guy doesn't appeal to them in any way. Our experience has shown that the broadcaster that the guy meets on the football field or in the restaurant or in a pub has more impact, more influence on him than a guy speaking from the capital whom uh, they probably think doesn't even know the reality of the day or in their zone and in their setting. Community radios also carry some names that create affection within the people, that reflects their own thinking and their own state of affairs. You have something like Peace FM, Radio Hope, Citizens FM, the voice of the people. And, and these are names that really uh, build affinity. And some of them you will have like Radio Prague, bearing the name of a community. And so they feel a sense of, of uh, ownership also in these radio stations. And so the tendency that they will believe in these radio stations uh, uh, is so high. And so we believe uh, they, they hold a great deal of potential in uh, 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 furthering transformation in whichever area you will want to undertake them. Uh, the radio also uh, effective uh, civic education tools too, uh, based on what I have just said. I told someone last night that so close are the community radios to the population and because these radios have provided them a medium of expression in uh, times when they are disgruntled, they will uh, first of all think on going to the radio stations to voice out uh, uh, their hurt, their dislike, and their views, rather than taking to the streets. 
we've heard them say, let's go to the radio station and say what we have to say. Conversely, you might have a situation where they will just take to the street and you will have violence. So for us, it tells us that if people can have a medium of expression, then they can uh, use it to be able to address uh, the differences and solve problems. These radios are also service-oriented rather than uh, profit-driven uh, 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 institutions. There are no adverts. The uneconomic uh, environment in which they operate uh, means that uh, there's actually no money. And so uh, this uh, makes us to believe that uh, if service is the driving force, we know that the funding can maybe be found some way, somehow. And in many cases, the communities, in fact, cater to these radio stations through their own little private funding. Where the governance structure is, 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 is a reflection of the community in terms of leadership, uh, the cross-sessions of the community, it's so easy for them to get into uh, financing and ensuring the running of uh, these radio stations. While we did all of these things, we had some realities to dawn on us. We were catering for West Africans just near us and around us, but there were Africans, West Africans, and the world that needed to know much more about what we were doing. And one of the ways to do it was to do it through the internet. We then began to seek funding to build a more sophisticated website than we had before. Our technicians told us that what we had was static and we needed a more dynamic website. And then entered the uh, whole thing of the social media, the Facebook, the Twitters, and the growing desire among young people in West Africa to subscribe to these uh, uh, apps. And so we were fortunate to get funding from the Open Society Foundation in New York. And with that funding, uh, may I digress a little. Two years back, we entered into a partnership agreement, a memorandum of understanding with Source Fabric to serve as a, a proof of concept partner. And while we were working in a number of other areas, this relationship digs, digs back to the Media Development Loan Fund days when we did some programs with uh, MDLF. And then when Source Fabric came on, we just went along uh, thanks to Douglas. And so we had been talking about building a website. With that funding from the Open Society Foundation uh, Regional Office for Africa, we then approached uh, Source Fabric, and then um, they had some new softwares coming up. Among them was um, the new scoop and the airtime. And then uh, it was just about time that all of these things uh, blended. And so Source Fabric thought that uh, they would come in, and they came in practically free of charge to bill us what you see today on the screen, this website. This website is more than dynamic with so many features, including geolocations. And um, let me tell you what, our former site never even had an archive. So every time we changed our story on the site, it just went <laughs> into oblivion. We never even had an archive. Today we have not just an archive, but we have a, a, a sophisticated archive that catalogs our different stories into the teams and so forth. So many features, maybe uh, Source Fabric will be able to tell you about that. But then this has also changed our website from just a, a, a new service into a platform. Because with that, we've been having um, a participatory sort of involvement with the work that we do. Five months down the road, after the launch of our new website built by Source Fabric, this is to the website, www.adr.org, has grown 500%. 
and it's increasing 25% monthly. And this is beyond what we ever dreamt of. As part of our diaspora outreach, you will see that we have had visits from uh, 178 countries and territories uh, around the world. Here you will see is our sound cloud. In addition to the apps of uh, News Scoop and uh, the audio uh, system of uh, airtime, we are also put on SoundCloud as we built uh, 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 the website. And um, the stats are very impressive. You will see here that um, on SoundCloud, we've been able to have 19,779 plays, 10,651 downloads, and uh, 513 persons uh, been in uh, love with WADR and 200 and 88 <laughs> comments. You look at the chat on the far right, on my far right, you see where you have the pick. The pick there was in September when WADR and Source Fabric won the award. So there was massive media coverage of this award because it's a prestigious award. And um, I was uh, chatting with Mitch and it was like, if you always want to hide like that on your graph, on your visit graph, win an award every week. <laughs> so SoundCloud today uh, has given us 24,500 plus followers. For us, this is astronomical. We can't even believe where we are. We have had, uh, like we said earlier, 19,700 plus uh, plays and the downloads are 10,651. And automatically, when we upload to SoundCloud, we then have an automatic upload to Twitter and to Facebook. These uh, two, and together, all of this work, uh, thanks to Source Fabric. Uh, on behalf of the management of WADR, I'd like to uh, give a special thank you to the staff of Source Fabric, especially those developers who are in the background, uh, not quite seen. The management of WADR wants to thank you so much for what you have done to elevate the profile of our radio. As you will see on this photo, it's uh, the award photo. Douglas Arellanes of uh, Source Fabric and I, when we received this award last month. Today, what this has done, it, ha it has transformed uh, WADR into an emerging key player on uh, the media landscape in West Africa. And um, it has um, already made us uh, a truly sub-regional radio. Our area coverage in terms of uh, the distribution of our content, in terms of our content gathering, um, we've been able to reach some of the remotest parts of uh, West Africa to, as I said, gather and disseminate our content. We want to invite you to join us in this um, effort to serve the people of West Africa. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Peter. Thank that was Thanks great. Thank um, I also want to point out, we didn't do an overlay, but the region that WADR covers with their program, if you put the European map on top, uh, you'll be astounded. It's amazing. And possibly just one question. Do you know from top of your head how many languages, like distinct languages and dialects, you're actually covering with your radio program? Well, basically, we, we, we're covering in French and English. What we ask our partner radios to do is that when we supply them, uh, for instance, a magazine program on malaria, malaria prevention, we expect that they would take the content, translate them into the local dialect, and that, that, that targets their audience, that uh, the audience will be able to get it. So it's the information they take out, and then they can relay it into the local mm. dialect. Basically, we're in French and English. Mm. Thank you very much, um, Peter Carter.